Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Hatton Promotions proudly present a contest of uh, 12 three-minute rounds to decide the vacant Commonwealth and vacant WBC uh, Eurasian Pacific Heavyweight Championship. The officials appointed for this contest, the supervisor from the British Boxing Board of Control, Mr. Alistair Hayes, the supervisor from the Commonwealth Council, Mr. Simon Block. The timekeeper, Mr. Colin Roberts, and the judges scoring the contest at ringside on the 10 must system, Mr. Michael Alexander and Mr. Howard Foster, both of England, and Mr. Victor Lochran from Scotland. And when the action begins, our third man in the ring this evening, our referee from All Hallows in Kent, Mr. Richie Davis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the boxers. And uh, firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks trimmed with white. He comes from Quebec in Canada, weighed in at 17 stone, 11 pound, and comes to the ring with a 13 fight professional record, consisting of 10 wins and the three losses. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Canada's Eric Martel Baholi. And his opponent across the ring in the uh, red corner. Wearing the all black trunks, he hails from Sydney in Australia. Weighed in at 19 stone, seven pound. Comes to the ring undefeated as a professional. 19 big wins from 19 big contests. 17 coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Australia's undefeated uh, Lucas. Big Daddy Brown! <laughs> Mr. Richie Davis will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Okay, fellas, you've both had your instructions in a dressing room. You know what I expect of you. Behave yourselves, do as you're told, and above all, defend yourselves at all times. God bless you both. 12 straight rounds for the vacant Commonwealth and vacant uh, Eurasian Pacific Heavyweight Championship. Two big lads, two very big punches. Lucas Brown beat Richard Towers last November in Hull. Fifth round knockout and a spectacular one. And then the following month knocked out Clarence Tillman. Again inside two. As I said, he can be vulnerable, but when he lets that right hand go, it can be an equaliser. Jab in there from the holy nice little left hook there as well. Just need to bring that left hand up. And as you said, with Brown with that big, dangerous right hand, you don't want to be dragging that left hand low. Brown has been down against Scott Belsh Scott Belshaw in Belfast. Against Travis Walker, both had him down. He says quite candidly, I know I'm not the best fighter in the world, but I might be the biggest puncher. Paul Butlin, who's been in against him, a real tough old journeyman from Melton Mowbray in Leicestershire. He said that, in his opinion, nobody hits harder. Nobody. <laughs> That's a man who's been in with, with Anthony Joshua. Nice start from the French-speaking Canadian. Sparring David Price in January. He hasn't got a full-time promoter. He says that this is his chance to make a mark. Solid jab there from Brown. Just knocking back the holy. Used to work on the doors in his uh, home city, Sydney, Lucas Brown. You can imagine he didn't have too much bother. I think if he asked me to leave a nightclub, I'd say, yeah, how quickly? They're not doing too much at the moment, Brown. Well, he's waiting for the Canadian to commit himself, isn't he? Yeah, he's got caught square footed there. Brown, from the back foot, from the jab, from the holy. The holy was a, a very, very decent uh, amateur ice hockey man in his day. You can see he's athletic. He had a nice little right hand there, left hook over the top. You can see he got athletic, nice little relaxed style. Just worry about that left low hand. 
At the moment, the holy boxing well. And not a lot coming from Lucas Brown, who's content at the moment just to watch and then lands the right hand. Talk about a commentator's curse. Right on cue, jab, right hand, and Baholi was forced backwards by the weight of that. And I nice guess body shot, though. I guess that's why he doesn't throw a lot of punches because he doesn't need to. He knows when he lands, it's going to have some sort of effect. Big Daddy can certainly whack. It's a nice jab again from the Canadian. Well, there's one big shot from Lucas Brown and had a couple of meaty looking left hand leads, but for me, the more work was from the Canadian. Yeah, it was a clear round for the Canadian, but holy for sure, you know, you won that round quite clear. Brown doing a lot of stalking, you know, not giving Baholi a lot of room to work, trying to maybe wear him out so he can, in the next round or next round or two, can get close enough to hit him with that right hand. Because when he did land with that right hand, he put Baholi on, on his heels. Make sure he's got to be tighter. It's because you're out here going like this. When you come to you, kind of relax a little bit. Make sure you come real tight. Okay. Is there a bit injury? Just sticking back to the corners. Also, too. We need to know. That's not distance. Brown's trainer, Matt Clark. Some instructions. Brown, who was pretty late to the game. He made his debut in 2009 when he was 30 years old. Neither of these fighters, by the way, it is a 12 rounder. Neither of them have ever gone the 12 round distance. So should this go long and to be in all honesty, I can't for the life of me see that it's going to. But if it does, then they'll both be into unknown territory. It's a nice right hand from Martel Baholi. Got this chance really with a terrific performance on the undercard of the Bellew Adonis Stevenson world title fight in Quebec when he beat Didier Burns in two rounds. Well, he's got some nice moves, hasn't he, Baholi? You know, like I say, he's nice and relaxed, athletic. Fast hands for a big fella. He's just showing that his boxing skills at the moment in these early stages are prevailing. Whether or not he can maintain it for 12 rounds, well, we'll see. Lucas Brown ranked 11th by the WBC, 15th by the IBF, and the same from the WBA. And it's by virtue of that clubbing right hand. The holy, holding his man, clamping him close. And Richie Davis just suggesting to both corners that they can just stop the chat. He's the, the no-nonsense sort, the referee. But Brown at last getting Baholi in the corner, but Baholi keeping his hands up nice and high. Now he knows what to expect. And it was a legitimate tact. Oh, that's a good shot. Great right hand. Well, oh, what a shot. Three. And Brown has found the punch he wanted through the distance. I don't think he's going to get up, is he? Well, he does, and steadily, the referee has a close look at him, looked at his corner. He's got to survive for 45 seconds, and Lucas Brown, having thrown that one big right hand, is now going to go looking for him and looking to finish it here in round two. What a shot. Oh, tremendous punch. Again, he doesn't draw a lot of punches. He doesn't need to. When he lands with that right hand, he has all sorts of problems for, for Baholi. Well, fair play to Baholi. I thought he wasn't going to get up, but he did do. Rose at the count of eight. And Brown trying to measure him now for another wrecking ball of a right hand. That's the thing with Brown, he has, he got, his, his feet are so slow out there, you know, he couldn't really jump on, on Baholi. But Baholi moving to the left, you know, he should be moving, circling away from that big right hand of, of Lucas Brown. Well, that right hand would have dented an armoured car. That was a terrific punch. And that's going to be a 10-8 round for the Australian. Oh, a tremendous shot. To the Holy's credit, he tried to stay up, didn't he? Really did. He's trying to find his feet. Oh, that's, a, that's a great shot. He 
done well to come out, done well to carry on as well, really did. And boxing well up until that point. Well, that is why people love to watch the heavyweights. And you see the really big punches. Let's listen in now. Tight, and then boom, short, same thing. And then make sure you're going to cut them off too. Okay, you just, you're coming forward and he's just walking around you. Step left, step right. One more round, okay. Step left, step right. Beautiful man, nice and composed. Nice composed. I, I think this could be the round if you get him again. Take the time, let him come. He was going to take a dive there. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You don't have to be a great crystal ball gazer to know that this is the round he could get him again. He'll be looking for it, and the holy, my goodness, he's going to have to be a little uh, more cagey than he was in that second round. If he takes another one like that, I suspect it's going to be good night. Well, he was. I thought for holy was boxing well up at that point. He just you can't make any mistakes, can you, with with a puncher like Brown? So he just brought that jab. He wasn't even low. It was just to the to the shoulders, not to the chin. And, Lucas Brown got seen a gap and landed with that big, the almost crude, it's a crude shot, isn't it? He doesn't throw it straight, it's a big looping right hand. There's nothing pretty about it, is there? But goodness, he can throw with power. So, and that's natural power, that is, as well. That's not something he's worked on, is it? It's just, just a gift that he has. Stands six foot four, weighs 19 and a half stone. That is one big man. Nice jab from Brown this time. And the holy, not surprisingly, a little bit more reticent to get into range. Well, that's the problem. With a big punch, once you've been hurt, it puts you in your shell. And it makes you even more tentative. A nice little left hook there from the holy, who's, who's, who, again, still boxing quite well. Right hand as well, just snuck in over the top of the left hand lead of Brown. But the holy needs a feint. He needs to try and draw the punch of, of Brown. He's crude. If you can see it coming, and it's you know, you're easy to avoid it. So plenty of feinting, jabbing, feinting, jabbing. Then maybe try and get the right hand into play. I said that Trevor Burbick was a Canadian champion. Of course, there are those who'd say Lennox Lewis. Although over this side of the pond, we always claimed him as our own. That's where Baholi doesn't want to be in the corner, nowhere near the ropes. He's always have the biggest part of the ring to his back. Plenty of movement, plenty of space to get out of trouble. Brown looking for any opportunity to throw that big right hand. A couple of good shots, well, a bit of a slap there. Decent wasn't it? left hand, wasn't it? And then the right hand caught him, but it was open gloved. Oh, the clash of heads there. Ouch. That's the head scores in the cut over the, over the left eye there to Brown. Well, accidental one. <laughs> Referee taking him to the corner and he's wanting the doctor to have a look. <laughs> now the doctor is coming to ringside to watch and to have a look and to see if it's OK to carry on. Normally, they'd go to the end of the round just to let the corner do their work. Box on. And box on, says Richie Davis, in this third round. And Brown, for me, Brown needs to try and get his feet a little bit faster, close the range quick enough. Well, now the hole is going to look to end it. The right hand there from the hole. We'll look again at that clash of heads between rounds. Looks a nasty cut from here as well. I think it's a, a cut across the eyelid, I think. We'll see more closely, but it certainly looks a bad one. The Holy still got to be careful. Oh, it's a terrible cut. So let's just see how bad that cut is in the corner. Third round over, and Brown actually didn't do a lot in that round. And there you see, it is a mess, and they've got to really go to work there. And let's have a look at how it actually happened. Here comes the clash of heads. Oh dear! Just trying to swing it for the right hand, wasn't he there? But holy, no, it's an it accidental head, but but it's a nasty cut. Really, put flapper skin hanging off from where I'm from where I'm sitting, where I'm looking at. Well, quite rightly, they've let the corner 
try and work their magic. And when they take that cloth away and apply a little bit of grease, then we'll see just how bad the cut is. It is indeed on the eyelid, as I suspected. And it's deep and it's long. Yeah, you can see that going on too long. And the holy really loading up with the right hands now, seeing a chance maybe to get a get an unexpected win. Was that a Baholi, Vic, a Baholi round? Yeah, it was. For me, it was. I think he did, again, Brown doing all the stalking, trying to get that right hand into play, but in the meantime, then Baholi pick up the points. Well, the big man, the big favourite, has a problem now, a big problem. But he only needs to land with one shot, doesn't he? Well, that's what he's hoping, and it's what a significant proportion of this British crowd are hoping that they're going to see. Problem he has with the cut, he, got, he has no guile, does he? <laughs> Brown, there's no head movement, his feet are very slow. And the blood again is flowing into that left eye and is surely affecting his vision. The holy landing a couple of solid shots and he's looking to target that eye as any fighter would. Well, for me, I think the holy just needs to stay out of trouble now, doesn't he? Just work me on that jab, pick up the points. With Brown, that, that blood seeping in that eye, he's going to struggle to see. The holy again, that right over the top, looking for the damaged left eye. That's the thing with Brown, all the, all the power, and he has tremendous power, obviously, but he has no skill set to set anything up, he can't disguise anything. He's jabbed that one, though, from Brown. Nice job there from Brown. And now the referee again is going to let the corner work on the eye, and I suspect he's going to want the doctor to have another look. And here we go. That is an awful cut. Well, the referee says box on. And if the fight was stopped before the end of four rounds, and it went to the cards, now can Brown do something here? He's going for broke, and this is his big gamble. He maybe recognises that he's got to stop his man right here and now. Tremendous exchange, and Brown is absolutely going for broke. Trying to put the only out of there. again for Lucas Brown with the knockdown. Look at this stuff, just tremendous stuff, isn't it? Once, once Brown gets a sniff of success, he just lay you off the hook, does he? And it's all with the right hand, all just clubbing you with that right hand. And just when you think Bahol he's going to wilt, he comes back with his own little combination. But he said, yeah, that was the fight we were expecting to see. Not so much the heavy bag he'd be training on, but that sort of punch power, he could punch trees. Well, Baholi's Baholi's resistance to him, to be fair. You know, look at that. The big right hand there, on, no, it's just on his knee. And I know a lot of heavyweights who wouldn't get up that. from that. We're getting out there, we need to up it. So into the fifth. Brown threw an awful lot into that fourth round. He's breathing very, very heavily on his stool there. 
How much has he got left in his tank? Well, and all, all the technical deficiencies. Oh, good right hand there from Baholi. But all the technical deficiencies are brown. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, does it? Because once he hits you, he makes up the deficit with the knockdowns. He has bull-like strength. Good work again from Baholi. And you heard the uh, theatrical oohs and ahs from the Canadian corner. Yeah, I've been impressed with the Holy, really have. You know, he's got some good skills, good resistance as well, and, and you know, fights back when he's under pressure. There's the attack again. What a right hand that was. The Holy just blinks, but he surely felt the weight of that. And the big attack is coming again now from Brown, clubbing away with that wrecking right hand. And the Holy works, trying to work that, that left eye with the right hand, trying to punch down. On the cut of, of Lucas Brown, but look at this. Down for the third time. How much more can Martel Baholi take? Seven, is he going to get up this eight, time? I don't think so. Nine, the fight is all over, and Lucas Brown is the Commonwealth champion. And despite an awful cut, he's prevailed courtesy of power, which you have to say is awesome. He might be crude, but by God, he can punch. It doesn't matter, does it? Like I say, all the things he can do, the technical stuff that he, that he should be able to do, and he clearly can, his slow feet, you know, his work ethic is not great, but it doesn't matter, because when he hits you with that right hand, you stay hit. And, and to behold his credit, he took some really good shots, fought back really well. You know, that was a real test there for, for, for Lucas Brown. And he did what he always does, and beats people up. And that's what he did, he just beat the guy up. And here's how it ended. One right hand to the head. And down he goes. What the clear shot was after that, I'm not too sure, but the first right hand to the head did enough damage, and Baholi, effectively, I think the damage had been done in earlier rounds. Yeah, it's the accumulation of shots. Taking those big, heavy right hands, as brave as Baholi was, they take the effect, and I just think he had the fight beaten out of him. But I was impressed with Baholi, but Lucas Brown... <laughs> With that power, I know the ability is not there so much, but with that power, you'd fancy him against almost, not the, the elite, but almost anywhere at this sort of level and, and maybe just above. The question is, is he going to be able to move on and continue to be a threat at that slightly higher level? They've talked about the possibility of the likes of Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. Those are obviously potentially lucrative sort of fights ahead. Maybe Derek Chisora, if Chisora were to beat Tyson Fury. There you are, a sporting round of applause for Eric Martel Baholi. Brave, wasn't he? Had his moments, and at one stage looked as though he was going to win the fight. But Lucas Brown. Well, you, you talk about the Fury, Chisora's, Deontay Wilders, and you tend to say, no, you tend to say, they'd all be able to box him, Chisora without work him. But they can all be hit. Well, you haven't seen Wilder get hit yet, but Tyson can be hit, Fury can be hit, Chisora can be hit. Now, this guy, you think he wouldn't close the gap, but if he hits you, you know, he's, if he can hit you, he can knock you out. Uh, you, they go in massive favours, all of those three fighters, but with the power he's got, you, you can write them off against almost anybody, except for the, you know, the Kalichkos. He's a happy guy, and we'll be hearing from him very soon. But first of all, the words which he'll be wanting to hear and which Australia will be enjoying hearing because Lucas Brown is the new Commonwealth champion. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and 26 seconds of round five, uh, Eric uh, Martel uh, Aholi fails to beat the referee's count to 10, the winner and the new Commonwealth heavyweight champion and WBC Eurasian Pacific heavyweight champion, Lucas Pintari Brown. Simon Block will now and your appreciation for your support. present Eric the belt Martel to Lucas Mahoney. Brown. Australia, who had a champion, well, with Peter uh, Jackson, Commonwealth Heavyweight uh, Champion, way back in 1889. Dave Smith in 1917, new, and now in 2014, champion, here's Lucas Brown and from and Sydney, Pacific, the new Commonwealth Lucas Heavyweight Champion. Brown. Where from now, who knows? But wherever it is, it's going to be fun, and we'll hear from the big fella shortly.